Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps real-time scenarios or DevOps real-time question. Now, as you can see on my screen, this is video number 9 and if you are visiting my channel for the first time, there are 8 other videos in the same series. You can go through my channel and look at the playlist. Alright, so before moving further in this video, I would like to requ request that kindly subscribe to the channel because it really motivates me to create more content like this. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so as you can see on my screen, this is the problem statement. So the first thing in the problem statement is consider yourself as a DevOps manager or a DevOps lead. Now you create your infrastructure on any sort of cloud, let it be AWS, GCP or Azure, you are using Terraform to maintain that, create that and destroy everything. All right. Now the problem statement is, let's say this is your repository. Okay. So this, if this is your repository, then there might be some code over here and all the Terraform files would be over here in this repository. Okay. Now let me scroll this. There are two new developers in your team or new DevOps in your team who are looking into these repositories. Okay. So let me just draw the smiling faces. They both would be working on this Terraform code. Now you need to define a process. So basically the question is you need to define a process. Let me write that. Now this process should be adopting a tool that will prevent you from overwriting each other's code. Now let me explain in another language. For example, if I have some sort of code and this code is in my local, not in some sort of repository. Okay. I just call it repository because uh, it is, it's like better way of explaining things, but this code is on local or something and two developers are straight working on this code. Now, if there is file X and this DevOps one is working on this file, he cannot work because he will overwrite the file and there would be a mismatch and that would create confusion. And when they run this file, these Terraform files, the AWS, let, let's consider AWS in this example, it will be destroying and creating a lot of ruckus with the state files in the Terraform code and it won't be able to run properly and your infrastructure will suffer this way. All right. So the question is these two folks, two new engineers will also be working on the same code. So you need to define a process and adopt a tool that will prevent you from overwriting each other's code. Also, you also want to ensure that you capture all the update in the latest version. So for example, if you, if dev DevOps one is doing any change, you should know the about the updates that all the latest updates and if devops 2 is doing any changes you should know about the update so basically everything that needs to be done has to be updated and you should be able to backtrack the code how will you do it so that's the problem statement i'll choose another color how is this possible now i know you all have a creative mind so let's do that what you can do is just pause the screen over here pause the video take out your pen and paper and write down the question understand the question, draw it in a blank sheet and understand what exactly I'm trying to ask over here or whatever the interviewer would ask you. Try to draw the solution, try to give the solution in that pen and paper, then move this video and understand how close you are to a solution. All right. So, and uh, before writing the solution and before going through the solution, kindly subscribe and like this video. Okay. So this will help me a lot. Okay. So I'm back again. So the color of solution is green. So we'll be talking about the solution now. So we would be dividing this into process. So the first thing that you need to know is you have to have something for SCM. SCM is your source code management. Okay. The best thing is to do is use a Git based version control system. So that would be your first step. Git based version control system or a few people used to call it VCS version control system, basically the same thing. Okay. So now when you say Git based version control system, it can be anything. It can be your GitHub. It can be your GitLab. It can be your Bitbucket. 
and so on and so forth it can be anything a lot of people use github but gitlab bitbucket have started making their strides in the ocean of devops so you can choose anything for this for the sake of this solution i'll be choosing github okay the second part the second part is establish a process that includes code reviews by peers and unit testing to ensure the integrity and functionality before integration of code now how do you explain like this for example if someone let's say uh, the first step is done all right so you already have a github so this is github and you have a repository over here okay so your whole code is now over here people are have started already working on it now if your devops 1 has written some code and devops 2 has written some code let's say devops 1 has raised a pr pr is your pull request or a merge request okay you need to ensure as a devops lead that these pr these pr or mr has gone through some sort of unit testing so unit testing is basically now this is where this question becomes interesting now unit testing is what exactly is happening over unit testing now there is another scenario involved in this consider your terraform files are creating two types of uh, let we'll take an example of ecs okay so ecs is basically your containers in ecs you have a fire gate and this is just an example it can be anything all right i'm just giving you an example or ec2 so these are the two services provided by your container services there is an option which is known as launch type so when you create a fargate container over there in ecs there would be a launch type and this launch type says fargate that's all and this ec2 launch type says ec2 very simple to understand now your application might be running on this ec2 or this fargate somehow some code is involved right let's consider your application is written in java code now in java code you have unit testing that is written on j unit okay in that java code you have written unit test cases what they do is they make let's say this is your java code let's explain it let me break it down this is your java code okay and this is your aws infrastructure in that you already had a fargate and you had an ec2 launch type okay this java code is going to make a call to this aws get the launch type and match it with the assert values so when you talk about j unit test cases do not get confused it's a type of unit testing used for java the something is it's something like assert and then you have to write two values one is expected and the other one is what you whatever you get okay let's i'll say get so if this launch type is expected ec2 and whenever you made a call over here and it got the ec2 value the unit testing is passed okay so this is one thing at j unit test so let's circle back so whenever in the second step what you are going to do is you can you're going to make sure that unit testing is done properly to ensure the integrity and functionality before the integration of code once this is done you are going to move to the third step so now the first part is done the second part is done the third part is over here establish a process where the fully integrated code in the repository becomes the latest master version so uh, if you want to, me to write it uh, i can write it so you can just establish a process where the fully integrated code in the repository becomes latest master version you can pause the video over here understand what i have written but either way i'm going to explain it so this establishing a process where the integrated code in the repository becomes the latest margin master version means once this devops has raised a pr or an mr 
that goes to the main branch so this would be your main branch right and here you stand as an approver so this is the process that you are going to uh, enforce that as a devops manager or a devops lead there is someone who is going to check the unit testing part that everything is running fine fine or not you can write a ci cd pipeline for that you can do it manually anything is fine i mean that's that's a disc, uh, topic for discussion for some 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 day else but right now you have to establish that process in which whether you are testing with unit testing or integration testing or something else you have to check whether this is suitable to go into the main or not once you are done with that that code is merged into the main branch now to make it clear let us understand through a file now this file is known as main.tf okay it has two lines of code so this two loc okay one line is this and second line is this your devops one has added one more line so there would be one line two line and three lines okay so this three line is not present in the main branch right so this is my main branch and i have taken my feature branch over here okay so once this is done he has raised he or she or them has raised a pr over here you stand a person over here and you're gonna approve it if you're not going to approve it let me select the color not going to approve it you have to write some comments in that PR. Once that comments are written, it will go back to the developer or your DevOps. He has to resolve them. Then again, he is going to raise the PR again. Then again, you have to check whether the comments are resolved or not. Once you approve it, once the approval is done, the code will be merged. Now your main branch will look something like this. Your main TF main.tf would be having line one, two, and three. So earlier it had only one and two, but now the new code has come, one, two, and three. Now you can ask me a question. What happens to the person who has the same code, who was working on the same code? So now this is DevOps two, okay? He has a separate branch, let's say feature branch hyphen two, and he was having, uh, this folk was having feature branch one. Okay, what he has to do because he has the old code, right? He does not have the older code. So what he'll do is he'll use git pull. Now this git pull will bring all the changes into his local, in his local system. And when he was having like one or two lines, now he'll get the third line. So that's how it works. There is another way. So another way is git fetch. And this is a very famous question for the interviews what is the difference between git pull and git fetch you can just google it so there is another way git fetch and git merge this is way git pull so this is how it needs to be done so pause the video over here if you have written down everything try to go through it and understand what exactly is happening over here i'll go back and understand the problem again so the problem was you are a devops manager or a lead you are creating your infrastructure on cloud using terraform there are two new engineers in your team and they will be working on the same code. So you need to define a process and adopt a tool that will prevent you from overwriting each other's code. You also want to ensure that you capture all the updates in the latest version. So these updates has to go in the latest version. Latest version means the release. Okay. How are you gonna do it? So the first thing is you have to use a source code management. It could be a Git based. Git based is based. I mean, you can use anything. So GitHub is what we are looking at. GitLab, Bitbucket, etc. There are a lot of lot of uh, available over there. Tools available over there. The second step is you are having a whole code. So whole code if is now present on a GitHub repository. You are going uh, the DevOps first DevOps is going to or another any, any DevOps any engineer is going to raise a PR or an MR, you have to define a process through which unit testing has to be done. So unit testing can be done using JUnit test. For example, we have taken Java code over here. You can see that Java code over here. And I have explained what exactly unit testing is. The, your Java code is going to make a call to an infrastructure. I gave you an example of ECS in which we have Fargate and EC2. Launch type is Fargate, launch type is EC2. Somehow the Java code is going to make a call 
to your AWS infrastructure and getting the launch type. Once it is done, it is going to match the value, which is I think assert value is the function name. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, write down in the comment section if I'm wrong over here. Uh, this is something like this assert value and then one is the expected value and one is the value that you get by making a call to the AWS. You match both the values. If it is true, then your test is passed and you can write multiple test cases depending on the type of infrastructure that you're using. All right. Another way to do is Terra test, but we are not going to talk about Terra test right now because this comes out of this goes out of the scope of this question. OK, so I'll try to make this as simple as I can. Once these tests are done, now you can have integration test as well. But right now, let's not discuss about integration test. That can be a topic for another video. After that, establish a process where the fully integrated code in the repository becomes latest master version. How are we are going to do that? We have already have a main branch in which we have taken a feature branch. So this is the feature branch that we have taken. What he has done is he has written one more line because the code has only two lines, one and two. He has a, written a 10, uh, one more line, and then he has raised a PR over here that you can see this one. And this is you. This is you. You are checking whether everything is fine or not. If it's not fine, then you are going to write some comments there. It will go back to the developer or your DevOps. He's going to fix that, raise a PR again. And this time, if you approve it, the main code will now look something like this. Now, how will the next developer, the other engineer is going to get the code? He is just going to do git pull or he is going to just do git fetch and git merge. And that's the way you're going to resolve this question. So I hope you folks have uh, understood this. If you have not, kindly go through the video again. Just pause it. Try to understand it. Try to draw everything and pause the video. Understand, close your eyes, understand the question and draw, st start drawing in your mind and after that on pen and paper. And then you would be able to understand. All right. So uh, if there is anything, feel free to comment below and we will address that. So thanks, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.